loneliness. It's hurting your health, your wealth, and it actually shortens your life. We'll talk about why this happens, how to fix that, and how to supercharge your life through relationships. Here we go. We moved around quite a bit when I was a kid. My dad was not in the picture from the age of 14, and I felt alone and isolated much of the time until I realized just how much he was hurting me and I started making some changes. There is a loneliness epidemic happening in the US right now. About 50% of the population is reporting loneliness. I think the numbers and percentages among leaders and business leaders and nonprofit leaders is much higher. Even the US Surgeon General Vivek Murphy is sounding the alarm. And this is what he says about loneliness. It's a feeling the body sends us when something we need for survival is missing. Something we need for survival is missing. Vivek Murphy says that living with loneliness is equivalent for your health as smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Think about that. Here's a list of reasons how we end up in this place and how it affects us long term. The illusion of connection. We are with people all the time at work, in the grocery store, other places, and we have these virtual friends, right? Tens, hundreds, sometimes thousands of friends on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and we're not getting real life friendships there. We're getting the highlight reel. Those highlight reels are not reflective of their lives. We don't have the depth of connection. We don't overcome obstacles together. So it's not a real connection. It's an illusion of connection. In our stories, our mythology, the successful hero is shown as a lone hero. Luke Skywalker, Iron Man, Moses, David, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, the list goes on and on. These are all lone wolf heroes, but that doesn't reflect reality. Because the truth is Luke Skywalker has Yoda, and Moses has Aaron, and Steve Jobs has Wozniak. We're immersed in a culture that is transactional, performance-based, post-industrial, highly mobile. People basically interact in non-immersive, short-term, highly specialized ways. So we move around pursuing better economic opportunities, not better relational opportunities. And depth and long-term benefits of relationships are not part of the equation. They're sort of a nice to have, not a must have. We also naturally long for belonging and acceptance and fear rejection. So we keep our weaknesses to ourselves instead of being vulnerable with other people. And on top of that, relational disconnection and trauma makes us stay relationally deficient and it's happening on autopilot. So we remember the feeling of this familiar relational past and we recreate it in the present and we repeat it over and over and over again, basically creating the same exact future. But we are wired spiritually, emotionally, socially, even biologically to be part of this human organism. So we wither, we struggle, and we hurt, we rage. We don't reach our full potential when we're lonely. To flourish as human beings, we need to be rooted with each other. If you go to California and see the redwood forests, those trees will take your breath away. They're massive and gorgeous. They can live to up to 2,000 years old. And that's how they live. Their roots go wide and they weave into each other and they fuse with each other. I credit my deep relationships and friendships with much of my success in life. So beyond, of course, Deb, my wife, my best friend, and I have a whole episode dedicated to that relationship. Over the years, I have nurtured, invested in very strategically in a circle of friends who really make me who I am. I want to share some of those principles with you now. Here's a tough one. You have to detox from past relational trauma. You have to. I have my fair share of it. You have your fair share of it. Everybody does. You have to do whatever it takes to get over it and stop recreating your familiar past and do whatever it takes to create a new future relationally. Work on revealing your relational blind spots. No one is born amazing at relationships. There's no such thing. Learn how to be a good friend, mentor, mentee. It's a skill. You can work on it. You can get better at it. Right now, think of the three, four, five closest relationships you have. I call that the friend blend. Collectively, those people represent your future. If you're honest with yourself, do you like what you see? And if you don't, what can you do to change things? Notice that when you start thinking about your friend blend as your future, you immediately start thinking redwood forest more than a school of goldfish. And when you start thinking about relationships like a redwood forest, you start thinking of your root system. 
You start thinking about joining a tribe of people who are high in relationships, purpose, commitment to each other. My friend blend is a treasure. It's one of the most valuable things I have in life. And this is why when I coach people at Exponential Life, I talk about the redwoods, the root system, the tribe that we need around us to flourish, to really reach our potential. A tribe that is high on relationships, on purpose, on commitment, going in the same direction. Um, if you're interested in learning more about that, you can go to the website. But thank you for watching this. And if you're interested in romantic relationships, I will leave you with with a video about the 17 moves Deb and I made to find and keep love and the secrets of our marriage that we enjoy every single day. Thank you again for watching this. Please hit subscribe, like, leave us some comments, forward it to someone you like. Thank you so much.